When one thinks of life containing planets in our solar system, Mars is the most often cited example. Despite multiple expeditions in orbit to the atmosphere and the surface, life or definite signs of life has yet to be found on Mars. High in the toxic sulfuric acid atmosphere of Venus, a new discovery of a rare gas might turn our attention away from the red planet and towards Earth's sister planet. Venus, named after the Roman goddess of beauty, is far from any human's notion of the concept. Though it is the brightest object in our night sky, it's also broiling at temperatures of hundreds of degrees. Its atmosphere is composed of highly corrosive sulfuric acid. The atmosphere is so dense Standing on its rocky surface would be like standing under 900 meters of water. Not exactly the conditions our anthropocentric bias might find suitable for life. It's the most extreme of extreme conditions found on Venus, which has forced our eyes elsewhere for signs of life. Like the effectively dead surface of Mars, as well as the exciting icy moons Europa and Enceladus. What started this reassessment of Venus wasn't blurry black and white images of alien life forms, nor was it underwhelming samples of microscopic extremophile organisms. With powerful telescopes, a large team of astronomers, physicists, and planetary scientists detected a trace of a chemical called phosphine within Venus's extremely dense atmosphere. A rigorous list of tests and analyses has told the researchers the only explanation for the gas must be something which is currently alive. Of course, due to the extraordinary claim of a potential biosignature for alien life, many other researchers have questioned this hypothesis, as it requires extraordinary evidence to prove. Instead of the gas indicating the presence of a life form which spews said gas, it's alternatively offered the gas may simply be the result of an unexplained atmospheric or geologic process on the still mysterious Venus. Even if the gas isn't an indication of life, it should force scientists to reanalyze past assumptions. Many of the researchers involved in the papers have stated this is simply the first step. Confirming whether or not the gas is truly a biosignature for life requires an expedition to the atmosphere of Venus and taking a sample, or at the very least going into orbit with some equipment necessary to analyze the gas up close. Many of the scientists in this field of astronomy are gung-ho about phosphine gas and its possible implications for the search for extraterrestrial life. But there's more to it than what many of the tabloids might have you believe from their headlines. As inhospitable as Venus is now, there's been a few hypotheses suggesting its rocky surface may have held liquid water early on in its history. Over the course of 600 million to a billion years, the water evaporated due to a runaway greenhouse effect. This caused the temperatures to soar to where they are today, roughly equivalent to 864 degrees Fahrenheit, 462 degrees Celsius. As the idea goes, life which formed before this major cataclysmic event may have adapted to move up 31 miles into the extremely dense and acidic atmosphere, where temperatures are much cooler. Today, the temperatures of the Venetian atmosphere hover around 86 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 to 80 degrees Celsius. The new findings provide a handful of ways to test for the possible presence of life without actually going to Venus. Earth, Venus' sister planet, was rather similar to Venus early on in its history. Hell on Earth lasted until the Archean Eon, about four to two and a half billion years ago. After that point, Earth diverged from Venus with the development of life. Many other events resulted in high quantities of biologic gases, stabilizing the atmosphere and climates of primordial Earth. Even when Earth was a hellscape of volcanism, life may still have flourished, evidenced by biogenic graphite in some layers of rocks around the world. The extreme conditions of Venus make expeditions rather tricky, but people have still tried. Dozens of robotic missions have been made to Venus, many of them under the Soviet Union's Venera series. Since the planet's atmosphere eats metal within minutes, most spacecraft which enter Venus' atmosphere are melted, disintegrated, and crushed upon landing. Only two managed to capture images of the surface before succumbing to the elements. 
While Mars is ringed by orbiters and crawling with rovers, Venus has a grand total of one Japanese probe inspecting it. Future missions are still on the drawing board, but are likely to be pushed forward with this new data. Dr. Jane Greaves, lead author of the new paper and astronomer with Cardiff University, had discovered the presence of phosphine gas on Venus through the James Clark Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii in 2017. Different types of molecules reflect and absorb different wavelengths of radiation. Each layer of clouds in the Venetian atmosphere absorbs radio waves at different wavelengths. You can therefore calculate which chemical is present based on the wavelength observed. That's how Dr. Greaves knew the chemical was phosphine, as it gives off a very specific wavelength. Dr. Greaves began looking for phosphine because one of the main components, phosphorus, is a very important chemical for life as we know it. The chemistry of phosphine reconstructs the molecule as a pyramid, with one atom of phosphorus atop a base of three hydrogen atoms. This gas has been detected on other planets before. NASA spacecraft Cassini found its characteristic wavelength within the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn. The major difference is the setting. On Jupiter and Saturn, a biologic origin for the gas is not likely. The extreme heat and pressures of Jupiter and Saturn much more easily force phosphorus and hydrogen atoms together to form phosphine. On the smaller rocky planets such as Mercury, Mars, Earth, and Venus, there isn't enough energy and pressure to produce a similarly enormous amount of phosphine without life. Anaerobic life forms very easily produce copious amounts of this gas. On such small rocky planets, it is far more likely that anaerobic life forms are to blame for the immense amounts of phosphine detected in the atmosphere. Phosphine is found in large quantities here on Earth. Look inside your intestines and you'll find some. Look in the steaming dung of badgers and penguins and you'll find some more. Take a trip to the bottom of the ocean and look inside the bodies of deep sea worms and guess what? You'll find even more. Wherever you find anaerobic organisms, you find phosphine gas. Human militaries have used the gas for chemical warfare. Other sectors have used it as a fumigant insecticide on farms. It even made an appearance on Breaking Bad. Despite our extortion of the useful gas, scientists are still uncertain exactly how it's made. Dr. Matthew Pasek, a geoscientist with the University of Florida in Tampa, explained how no one is certain how phosphine is produced. Its association with anaerobic organisms is proven, and there's a definite correlation, but no causation. No one has observed microbes actually belching out the gas. This is an important distinction, as it provides some much-needed skepticism to the claims of its definite association with life on Venus. With the conditions found on Venus, there really aren't many other explanations which would account for the gas other than life. Just how much phosphine is there? After the 2017 finding of phosphine, a bigger, better telescope was needed to get a finer map of the gas on Venus. The team went to Chile to use the Atacama Large Millimeter Array in March of 2019. This trip confirmed that the gas was phosphine, and a lot of it. They found the gas ranges from 5 to 20 parts per billion, thousands of times that measured in Earth's atmosphere. That's pretty much the end of the road for direct observations, as the coronavirus pandemic and limited time of Venus place in our horizon forced the research team to go digital. No more evidence to gather, but many tests to run. The team spent a year digitally recreating the environment of Venus via simulations to test the possible explanations for the gas. Since light constantly breaks down phosphine, in order to have such a large amount of it, there has to be a source constantly replenishing the gas as it disappears. Venus has volcanism and lightning storms, but these won't produce enough energy to keep the phosphine cycle going. According to the computer models, life forms are the type of producers which could do it. This new research essentially set out to disprove as many explanations for the gas as possible, not to prove a particular one. That being said, a non-biological explanation still cannot be ruled out. The research team involved in the study, as well as other scientists ranging from geoscientists to biologists, have issued caution over the robustness of phosphine as a sign of life. This gas is not a certainty, only a sign of anomalous and unexplained chemistry. 
As such, the models remain incomplete, but offer tantalizing clues for further study. Phosphine isn't the first gas to be detected on alien worlds, nor is it the first gas considered a biosignature for life. Belched methane and oxygen anomalies on Mars can be produced by chemical reactions of a non-biological origin. These signals of weird gases which were thought improbable to occur are amazing finds, but not exactly convincing proof of aliens. The gas is for sure on Venus, but what kind of organisms would it take to make it? Anaerobic organism is kind of a vague term. If a microscopic, single, or multicellular organism were to live in the atmosphere of Venus, it would have to survive in a high acid environment with protective armor of dermis layers resistant to dissolving in the atmosphere. This kind of protection can be observed in the extremophile microorganisms which thrive in Earth's most extreme conditions. Those single cell critters which stick around the volcanic black smokers on the bottom of the ocean, or the cyanobacteria which turn the bubbling hydrothermal vents in Yellowstone and otherworldly green, blue, and orange, are the best model organisms we have for life on Venus. Microbes riding air currents called gravity waves could live, metabolize, and reproduce within the droplets of 90% sulfuric acid and 10% water floating around the Venusian atmosphere. Given the amount of phosphine, the number of hypothetical microorganisms in the atmosphere would be more than enough to produce it. These microbes could be based on DNA and carbon, convergently evolving a system like our own, or something unlike life as we know it. Before jumping to xenobiological speculation, more tests and full missions to the planet are needed. NASA has announced that a few are planned for the future, so only time will tell if this new find is a weird natural phenomenon or our first contact with alien life. Subscribe to consume some delicious contento. Trash the like button, scrape out a comment, and blast the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. A very special thanks to my patrons, Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Ed Peretz, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, Jacob Spencer, Dana Manchester, Clayton Maxfield, and Tron. If you'd like to support my channel and receive some extra content, pledge to my Patreon at any tier you want.